Evening everyone, today I'm going to give you a quick tour of my Hallicrafters SX115 receiver. Um, it is a hand band only receiver covering the 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 meter bands. Um, the 10 meter section being so um, wide is actually split up into four sections to make it easier to tune. Uh, this was produced in the early 60s, I think between around um, 61 and 65. It is a triple conversion super heterodyne receiver, which pretty much means that the IF frequency is shifted three times, or as I like to say, thrice, because it sounds a hell of a lot more hoity-toity and makes me sound a hell of a lot more intelligent. It has got 18 valves in it, um, one of which is a regulator. Um, I've made minor um, modifications to it. Um, I changed the oscillator valve, this one right here, from a 12AT7 to a 12AZ7A, which is able to handle higher frequencies. Now, one thing to take note of, should you actually get um, one of these receivers or one just luckily fall into your hands, it is very, very, how should I say, selective as to which... Um, valves you can um, put into it like some won't oscillate at higher frequencies like the 10 meter band is dead if you use some of the modern russian valves for example another modification i changed two of the six dc6s the one for the rf amp and one for the first if amp to six dk6s which are pretty much the same spec although a higher transconductance which means you get a bit more gain and it makes the receiver a bit more sensitive uh, one thing i haven't done as yet is to replace the filter capacitor in the um, power supply because well this one's getting towards about 50 years old so um, it's getting a bit long in the tooth but it seems to work so far I was um, smart enough to bring this receiver up um, using a Variac very very slowly like I'm talking about over the space of an hour inching it up you know five volts at a time just so this thing doesn't burst in like a party popper with a hell of a lot more smoke and noxious fumes Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this little fella up and being the evening, I'll choose the 40 meter band because it's pretty active and I have a soft spot for it. Hopefully we'll hear something interesting soon. Oh yes, one thing I did fail to mention, um, I did replace the power plug. Being an American device, this does run on 110 to 120 volts, so I made sure I stuck on a proper power plug, lest I stupidly, in a fit of absent-mindedness, plug it into 240 volts and make the thing explode. But um, the first thing I did was replace it with a power plug with an earth. The original didn't have an earth pin. Pretty much um, the chassis was connected via capacitors, small value capacitors, to the neutral and the active pins. Now, it's probably not a good idea to do that these days, but in the 60s, I suppose they're a bit more lenient with their um, electricity. Hell, they've had um, receivers. I'm not sure if you read about the All-American 5 receiver, where the chassis was live. Um, good way to get yourself killed on a Sunday afternoon listening to your favourite program should things fail. But we've learned better. Things are different now. It's a bit more stricter, so may as well try and exercise safety, shall we? Alright, um, without further ado, let me plug this little fella in and have a listen. Alrighty, here we are. After a almost back-breaking experience of trying to lift this thing, because believe me, <laughs> they don't call these things boat anchors for, in for nothing, because, well, they weigh a ton, certainly that. I've um, put it on my little shelf above my trusty IC746, which is featherweight in comparison so here we go over here we've got a beautiful analog s meter look at how beautiful that is if you um play with um amateur radio you know what an s meter is basically the more s units the stronger the signal down here we have got the antenna trim sort of like an antenna matcher for receive rf gain which I always leave on full volume self-explanatory this changes the band. At the moment we're in 40 meters, got 80 meters, 20, 15, and 10 split up in four sections. But let's go back to 40. Alright, we've got a function switch over here. 
don't know how well that is going to focus but let's zoom in just a tad pardon the really poor lighting obviously it's got your power lower sideband upper sideband in single sideband mode and then in AM mode you can choose either the lower or the upper sideband depending upon which one comes in the strongest as we're on 40 meters at the moment we're on lower sideband on single sideband over here is the main tuning knob just zoom out a bit so I'm less shaky at the moment, well, as you can see, firstly, it's split up in one kilohertz divisions. Hey, there we get a squeak. Up to about 25, where it starts again at zero. Why is that? Because up here in the main... Oh, you can see my Celtic Frost shirt. Yes, metalheads do like amateur radio. But um, over here, everything's split up in 25 kilohertz increments. And what's really funky, if you look at the main tuning dial... The needle goes up to indicate which band it is on as well. How lovely is that? Mechanical and analog. All right. So um, before my battery dies, whoop. Okay. Obviously, let's see over here. Selectivity. So you can choose the bandwidth of the IF stages. Pitch for single sideband. Notch filter. AVC. Automatic noise limiting. All right, so um, let me tune up and let's see what we can find. All right, we've got ourselves a rather strong Morse signal over there. I'll just um, lower the pitch a bit to something a bit more comfortable. and give you an example of what the um, selectivity switch can do. At the moment, we've got um, the IF on 3 kilohertz, 2.5 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, and that gets rid of a lot of the noise for Morse to make it a bit easier, especially if the band is crowded. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find a nice single sideband station and um, let's have a listen. All right, here we are. We've got a couple of fellas sitting here talking about cars. Nice strong signal. Sounds lovely. Well, obviously, we're using a valve receiver over here, so, you know, you wouldn't expect it to sound crap. Well, um, just to give you an idea, this was actually my, um, is my first ham receiver. This, I was using this, um, actually, I'll turn it down so I'm not fighting against it. I was using this to, um, listen to people before I got my license. Um, if anything, this really motivated me to get it. It's a lovely piece of equipment. All right. Let's find ourselves a nice little AM station. Let's find it, uh, let's go to 7110 where those nasty, nasty people who are, um, ooh, let's change modes. Transmitting in the middle of the handband, 700, sorry, 7110 kilohertz. ACMA, see this? See this? This is not good. This is not good. This is naughty. If only something can be done about it. Alright. Up at around about 7200. We've got some of the Asian stations. Well, somewhere. Here we go. And they are being legal. That is legal. That is okay. This part of the section 7200 to 7300 is on the secondary basis, so they're being good boys. 7110, naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. But, yeah, I doubt it. ACMA sit there and watch YouTube, and if they do watch YouTube, they wouldn't be watching my videos. But anyhow, hope you had fun, because I certainly did. I love this radio, and I should use it more often, but it hurts. Anyhow, I'll say see you later from VK3NAF. Catch up.